My name is Kevin Skywarner, and I'm writer and creator of Stonewall the Musical, an unapologetic queer musical that does not whitewash history. It takes place between here, our current era in 2020, and June of 1969. Bouncing back and forth, but tonight would have been night five, the fifth night of the Stonewall Uprising where a bunch of people who've been pushed too far stood up and fought back against police brutality. I'm from Detroit. And so although June, as in Pride Month, ended a few days ago, it is hotter in July. And what I thought was this global unity of harmony and racial justice was just more white privileged men who happened to be gay. The voices of the marginalized community of people of color didn't shout as loud. They couldn't. They didn't have as big of a voice as they do now with Lena Waith and Billy Porter and Laverne Cox. All those people give me hope and give me inspiration in my dream cast when Stonewall the Musical makes it to Broadway that Laverne Cox will play Marsha P. Johnson. It never happened, but you know what? I dream big, so you never know what you're gonna get. I'm still finishing the hat, so they can't wipe us off the map. Music and stories and art are essential. They are essential, and they are needed as therapy outlets to those who don't feel like they have a voice otherwise. You may notice the Superman painting behind me. That was done by my late friend, Max Wilde, as in Oscar Wilde, an openly gay, brilliant man who was my dear friend and almost like a, a father figure. So I called him my gay dad because I looked up to him as a father figure. Little did I know that at the same time I was forming a connection with Max. I was forming a connection with someone who I would never get to know personally, but who ended up dying from the same thing. My cousin he came out just in time, just in time for the Disney Renaissance with the Little Mermaid. and Howard Ashman, and Alan Menken. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know something's starting right now. Watch and you'll see, someday I'll be part of that world. The Little Mermaid, arguably transgender Disney film. Hello, it's gender neutral. The mermaid is a symbol of the trans community. I didn't know that at the time. Ursula, <laughs> the sea witch, was patterned after the late divine. And so I followed Howard Ashman and Alan Menken with my cousin. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. As bad as I've been, Ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. I've wasted time. I've wasted me. Water flows onto the bridge. Let it pass. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't hold it back anymore. Let it go. Let it go, that perfect girl is gone. Here I stand, and here I'll stay. The second Hans Christian Andersen inspired film of Disney, who I grew up listening to, Rent, Adina Menzel. Take me, baby, or leave me. A tiger in a cage can never see the sun. This diva needs her stage. Baby, let's have fun. You're the one I choose. Folks would kill to fill your shoes. You love the limelight too now, baby. And with that, I felt inspired by Jonathan Larson's creation. And she starred next to 
someone that my cousin and I both acted with as a young child. I remember being a munchkin alongside Kristen Bell. And there they are in Frozen. Now, I was a Jewish lesbian, just like Maureen, Adina Menzel's character. As scared as I was, I had, I found the courage to come out to my late cousin. Oh, Rent, I can look at it now and say, it has a lot of problems. I love the music of Rent. I memorized the entire score. When I was a kid, one of my talents was that I got in front of the class, could sing both Aladdin and Jasmine. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, and splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart aside? Soaring, tumbling, freewheeling through an endless diamond sky. Sung by the amazing Leah Salona. And then later, as another transgender Disney movie came when I was in high school with Mulan. Who is that girl I see staring straight back at me? Why is my reflection someone I don't know? I remember as kids going to the theater and seeing Mrs. Doubtfire. I think it still holds up and we all miss Robin Williams. But when I was a kid, something about Harvey Firestein's character made me focused on him. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a fine, catch me a catch. I knew that voice from then on. And when that voice brought me to Torch Song Trilogy before Mulan and The Simpsons as Carl, I paid attention. He took the movie of Kinky Boots and Billy Porter. I'm not my father's son. I'm not the image of what he dreamed of. So I jumped in my dreams and I found an escape. Maybe I went to extremes with the leather and lace. But the world seemed brighter six inches off the ground. And I felt so proud just to live out loud. Story of an unlikely friendship that all started out of drag queens needing boots. I loved, for a very personal reason, Katie Lane. Early help will arise here to cure these self-induced wounds. Why hurt yourself, Captain? Why hurt yourself? Does your heart conceal what the mind of love reveals? So when I tell some people that I'm working on Stonewall the Musical, their next question, especially after I say inspired by Hamilton, is Oh, Stonewall Jackson? Here is a taste of what that would be like. Get down, you racist piece of shit. Get down and make way for change. Get down, you racist piece of shit. Get down and make way for change. Get down, you racist piece of shit. You lost the game.